Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Janine McGowan, and I design cross stitch as the blue flower. It's a beautiful, cool morning here in northern Nevada, and actually a bit overcast. We're having on and off patches of sunlight, but so much cloud cover is a little unusual for us, and I'm hoping that we get some rain out of it before too much longer. I know all the new plants would appreciate that. Also, today is May the 4th, so that's extra fun. I didn't even realize it until my feed started filling up with the appropriate messages, so <laughs> that's always nice. I missed the last floss tube because I was busy model stitching, so it's been a couple of weeks, but I'm very glad to be back with you today. And we're jumping right in with stitching in action. First up, we have Happy Campier, Campers. Sorry, can't talk this morning. This is submitted by Harriet, and she converted this into a birth sampler for her grandson, and I love the way that she did that. She just took out the two little motifs at the bottom, the campers, and put in all the relevant information. And the reason she chose this for her daughter and son-in-law is that they actually love to go canoeing on lakes and camping. They even have the, the tent that gets strung up between the trees for bear safety. And uh, yeah, I just think it, it came out wonderfully. She used the called for DMC and maybe a couple of additions. I wasn't sure about that. And 40 count Newcastle light mocha fabric. I love the way it came out. Also, she did her first attempt at lacing. So well done, Harriet. Thank you so much for sharing with us how you made this design your own. Next up, we have Bees in the Greenhouse. This is from Carolyn. I'm so excited to see these happening <laughs> because it's a particular favorite design of mine. So thank you, Carolyn, for sharing this. Now she's on Facebook as Homespun Needle Group if you'd like to learn more about her finish. And the details for how to finish this are also on the Blue Flower website. I love the fabric she chose. I love the multicolored tassel. I love everything about it. Great job, Carolyn. I think your finish might be better than mine, <laughs> but, but I'll take it. Well done. <laughs> All right, what I'm stitching is models. It's just models. I would love to have some time to work on my ongoing project for the year, and I think I will actually in the next week or two but those of the stitchers who are at the quilter station got to see me model stitching as fast as my fingers could go and obviously I just finished it up but the models came back from the printer yesterday so I will show those later in the video and as I said it'll be nice to be back to some designing time and some actual stitching time again because I missed that Stash Spotlight. One of the questions I was asked at retreat was about, you know, where do I get things? What kind of supplies do I have? And because we don't have an LNS here, I tend to have a lot of fabric on hand. Um, probably a fairly ridiculous amount. But I, I remember when I was in Calgary last year, Jeanette Douglas went with us to Traditional Stitches, and she and Janice had laid out, you know, the threads for her design that was upcoming, and they were just playing with different fabrics. And that's not something I get to do unless I have the fabric here in my house. And so this is a, a long way of justifying why I have a lot of fabric. <laughs> and being at Quilter Station, although I restrained myself, it was very difficult from buying a lot of their beautiful quilt fabric because I didn't have something in mind and I'm trying to be better. There were no restraints <laughs> when it came to the cross-stitch fabric, so I picked up some lovely things. First one is called Tea Set. This is from Shakespeare's Peddler. I'm going to try and get you a better picture against the white so you can see that. It's, it's very gray, which I love. Um, it can be hard to find gray fabrics, and they're a particular favorite of mine. The next one, honestly, this one I would have bought for the name even if I didn't like the fabric, but I do. <laughs> this is called Ween Beans. <laughs> from Needle Bling Design, and many of you know we have a dachshund mix, so anything that references a weenie and toe beans, I'm in. Okay, next one is Mothwing. This is from Forbidden Fiber. Again, always hard to see, but it's a beautiful kind of sagey celadon color, and it does remind me of the wings of some of those beautiful moths, so this one's going to be tough. This one is called Barb's Blend from r, &R Reproductions. It it is close to white, but it's nice, and it's not one that I get to get a hold of very often, so I snatched it up um, because it's not quite white and you can still see things against it. And then finally, I have Honeydew, also from Forbidden Fiber. Again, tough to take a picture, but it's a beautiful sort of pale 
honeydew color, hence the name. So that was my, my stash spotlight for Quilter Station. Now, world around. When I was in Kansas City for the retreat, I got to visit, hey precious, someone came in to visit my world around. We've got a rye here who's trying to nibble on it. <laughs> I got to visit a friend of mine. Um, I met her when I was living in Dallas and she and her family are from Syria. And so she moved to Kansas City. Whenever I'm there, I try and stop in and spend some time with them. And she had this beautiful shrub, well, not shrub. It was a beautiful plant in a container, but it was quite large. And precious, please don't. All right, I'm gonna bring this over here so Rai's not helping herself. <laughs> um, she had a beautiful shrub and it was a lemon verbena, which I love. I love the fragrance of it. It smells like lemon. And we were just chatting, you know, we'd been around her garden chatting about the different plants. And she said that what they do traditionally in Syria is they dry the leaves, pick them off and dry them. And she had this enormous jar full of dried leaves and then they make tea. And so she made me some lemon verbena tea and it was wonderful. I have had lemon verbena in my garden a lot because I love the smell, um, but I've never had it in tea. And so it inspired me to start looking it up. I learned that lemon verbena, and here I've got a picture, but I'm also going to show you this is the plant. I rescued it from the about to be planted pile in the garden, which is why I rise in here trying to nibble. Um, it originates in Argentina, Chile, Peru area of South America and just a native plant there has been used for really generations um, for a lot of different things because the leaves have this beautiful lemon fragrance. Obviously it's used in cooking uh, to provide that fragrance, but it's been used as an insect repellent because of the citrus. It's used um, in tea, again, historically, to promote digestion and combat colds and flus. It can be used as mouthwash um, and to promote healthy skin and even mixed into cream as a topical sort of pain reliever, which was amazing to me. Now, obviously this is a South American plant. It was brought to Europe in, I think the 1700s and became very popular there, of course, because it's wonderful. Now it grows all around the world, but in Victorian times, especially, they were very fond of the flavor and women used to sew it into their clothes, a sort of a, a perfume deodorant combination, which I thought was just amazing. Let's see, the leaves were placed strategically in your clothing. In some cultures, it's thought to bring good luck. And I'm just particularly thrilled by the fact that this, I mean, call it a native plant. It's a wild plant, could be considered a weed in Argentina has this amazing impact now has grown all around the world to the point where a Syrian woman brings it with her to grow because it's part of her culture hundreds and hundreds of years later. So there you go, lemon verbena. It's not a perennial for us. We have to get a new plant every year in this climate and I do because I love it. So just a moment for something so humble that's gone all the way around the world and become beloved. All right, questions. Last video, how do you feel about marmalade? Got a lot of fun answers there. And then this video, the question was, would you like to go roller skating? I don't know why, but something came up in my feed the other day that was people obviously skating with a lot of skill and ability, which I never had, but I always liked going roller skating growing up. It was, it was nice and it was something that you could enjoy even if you didn't have a lot of skill, which I always appreciate. And so I was thinking, I might like to try that again. I don't know. So I was going to ask you, how do you feel? Would you like to go roller skating? That's, that's the question. Best thing this video was the Quilter Station Retreat. It was so lovely. It was so great to be there and a huge thank you to everyone who came. I loved meeting you all. And if you do get a chance to go to that retreat, I highly recommend it. It's a very comfortable venue, nice food, well, wonderful food, really good setup, plenty of room to spread out and set up your stitching thing. I think Rita calls it your stitching nest, which I really love. And yeah, if you get a chance, they've got a great lineup for fall. I don't know if there's still spaces available, but always worth doing if you do get a chance to do that. All right, giveaway. Last video, it was this beautiful Bells on Bobtails, sunny yellow fabric from Forbidden Fiber. And the word to use was sun, the winner of that is Melissa Little Red. So Melissa, 
drop me a message, send me your address, and I will get that in the mail to you. This time we're going to do two winners, and it's because I have two new releases, which you will see here in just a few minutes. So the winners will get to pick any one of my designs that they would like, including the new ones. And because I was in such a frantic hurry, use the word rush in your comments to be one of those two winners. On to announcements. Now is the time. First up, this one is called In the Garden. And it was inspired by sort of, well, certainly my focus this time of year on gardening. But the idea, I saw an antique sampler that had like these little, um, almost cartouches around the outside and then just a message in the middle. And they reminded me of little garden beds. So that was the way I chose to lay this out. And again, I'll put in a, a picture properly of both of these so you can see them. But you can see here's the pillow. We've got all sorts of things. We've got a dog. We've got a rabbit eating lettuce. Raccoon eating the berries. Let's see what else is going on in there. I put a little, let me get on the right side, a little hornworm down by the tomatoes. And there's a chicken in the corn. And the message is, where is heaven? Is it not just a friendly garden plot? So I'm going to take a minute right here, pause, and put in the photo for you so you can see it better. And then next, this one is, I have always meant to do a series of sort of non-traditional seasonal Valentines because I think I mentioned when I did the first winter Valentine that I don't really celebrate Valentine's Day. Um, but of course I celebrate my love for my partner all the time. And so I wanted to do ones that were not tied to the traditional Valentine season. So this is summer Valentine. Here we go. We've got two little otters holding hands and the message for this one was inspired by, of all things, there's a quote in Bram Stoker's Dracula where one of the characters is writing to her friend. She says, I long to be with you and by the sea where we can talk together and build our castles in the air. And so here we go. I adjusted it slightly. I love to be with you and by the sea. So I'll take another minute here to put in the big photo so you can see it properly. And that is both of my new releases. Now, I'll get the information up on the website this weekend. The email has already gone out to shops, so they'll have that information if you'd like to order those. And I'll put the newsletter out this weekend so you can get the links to all of those. It also means that the old, well, the old, the releases from Market are going to be available as PDFs, so I'll put that link in the newsletter as well. On to the final announcement. Rye just turned four. It was actually about a week ago, and so every year I've been trying to do a puppy video of Rye's greatest hits. And her time with us coincides almost exactly with when I started doing Floss Tube. I think she first appears in the second or third video. And so, so many of you have watched her grow up from this tiny bundle of legs to the glorious weirdo that she is now. And it's it's just been delightful to get to see that whole journey with you. So I've got a little bit of a longer puppy video, but it's mostly Rye and some of her look backs and high points and just all about Rye in this puppy video. So thank you so much for joining me this morning. I really appreciate the chance to spend time with you, especially since I missed it last weekend. I hope you have a lovely weekend, and I look forward to talking with you again in two weeks. Bye.